Welcome back, everybody. Matt, the man here. I hope you're doing well. So, when the, when the, when uh, Spider-Man Four being at odds right now, whether to do the Marvel decision of grounded, or Sony's decision of doing another team-up movie with Toby and Andrew, I came up with an idea, a pitch last night, on what I could see Spider-Man Four bringing in one of the OG Spider-Man, well, Toby or Andrew. Now, I'm going to go with Tony because he's my favorite of the Spider-Men. Um, I grew up with the Sam Raimi movies. I love Tony McGuire as Spider-Man, Peter Parker. So I decided to go with Tony on this one. And I think you'll see why when you hear my pitch. So, the way we left off uh, and uh, Tom Holland at the end of No Way Home, he was in his apartment. Nobody knew him because of Doctor Strange wiped everyone's memory. Uh, so Ned and MJ don't know who he is. Uh, he's in an apartment. He's going to be going to college. He made his own new suit. No Tony Stark tech or whatever. So he's now going to be more uh, grounded, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And I say you start the first 30, the first act in the movie is going to be kind of similar to what we saw in Spider-Man 2 where Tom Holland is trying to figure out everything. He's trying to go to college. He's trying to hold down a job at the Daily Bugle. He's trying to meet new f new friends like Amy Harry Osborne is a roommate or in his class. Felicia Hardy or Gwen Stacy. Um, he's trying to meet new new people and get you know have friends. And that's the other thing, trying to hang out with friends while also having to meet Spider-Man at the same time. So he's trying to juggle everything. Um, kind of like we saw Tobey Maguire do in Spider-Man 2. Um, and it's not working out. You know, there's a new villain in town. You know, Kingpin is hanging. Kingpin is going to be the main villain. He's cracking down on superheroes, on vigilantes. He hires Fortman that we saw in Homecoming to go after Spider-Man, go after him. And, you know, Tom Holland's Spider-Man can't do it. He can't figure it out. He's struggling. He doesn't have an Aunt May. He doesn't have an Uncle Ben. There's no Avengers to go to. So he is lost. He is He's almost getting fired from the Daily Bugle. He's almost, you know, failing out of college. He's just, he's not getting it done. Yeah, he goes and says one person over here, but there's five other crimes going on on the other side of New York. And he's just, he can't do it anymore. So he finds in his little backpack that little thing that Doctor Strange had to open up a portal. And... He decides to go talk to one of the OG Spider-Man and figure out, get some life lessons, if you will. So, in the end act one with Tom Holland Spider-Man going through a portal. Portal boy. And he lands in Tobey Maguire's universe. The Sam Raimi universe. And he finally catches up and finds out where Peter Parker is. And he goes and visits him. And there we see Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. He's married. He's with MJ, Mary Jane Watson, Kirsten. We get Kirsten Dunst back in the movie. Even if she's only in two or three scenes. Just to say, this is where they are now in their lives. You know, you know Tobey's like, hey Peter, what are you doing here? And, you know, Tom Holland is upset, you know, you see him the, the sad Tom Holland face. And he's like, I need your help. I need to, you know, figure out how to, you know, how, how do you do it? How, how are you Spider-Man and Peter Parker at the same time and go to college and all of this? And I would say we saw from Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire did learn how to do that. So the second part of this movie would be more of a, you know, Master Apprentice, in a way, you know, where Tobey Maguire's theater is teaching Tom Holland how 
how to figure it out. You know, just like we had that one great scene in Spider-Man 2 where Doc uh, and his wife and Peter are sitting down at the table and they're talking. This time we're going to have uh, Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, and Tom Holland sitting at a table. A, a really a nice circle moment, like come back around now that Tobey Maguire is older. You know, he's more experienced, he's married. Maybe he has a daughter on the, already. And he's just, and him and MJ, and even MJ, Kirsten Dunst, are saying, you know, it, it was hard at the beginning. You know, remember seeing Spider-Man 3? You know, I always wanted to be with Peter, and I, when I found out he was Spider-Man, I, I loved it, but then I realized, looking back on Spider-Man 3, you know, every time I wanted him there, he was off saving the world, saving someone, and I forgot, oh yeah, this is going to be my life. My my husband, my boyfriend, is going to have those moments of always having to run off and save some money. You know, it was really hard, I got frustrated. But I also had to deal with it myself. And we finally came to a, a, a you know, a balance at some point. And then that's when Tommy McGuire can add in, you know, when then we had a kid on the way, and then I was like, I gotta be a father, how am I gonna be a father, be a husband, still go to work, still be Spider-Man, you know, it's still, I still haven't figured it all out. While this is going on, so it's not just talking, 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 the whole second act, we can have Spider-Man having to take down a villain, let's say Vulture. The original idea for Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire was going to have John Malkovich as Vulture and Anne Hathaway as Black Cat. This is the opportunity to have Vulture when they can get John Malkovich or somebody else be the Vulture in, in Tobey Maguire's universe, a different actor than Michael Keaton. And you can see, and that's when Tom Holland can say, Oh, I, have a, I had a Vulture in my universe. I know how to handle him, but this is a little bit of a different vulture than the one that Tom Holland had. So then we can have a mission of Toby and, and Tom going off to try and, you know, take care of this vulture villain. So that way we get some action in the movie, in the second act. And basically at the end of the day, in the second act, you know, Toby says, I'm still figuring stuff out. You know, I'm, I'm in my 40s now and I... Now I'm still, now I'm adjusting to having a kid. You know, I'm still being there for MJ, I'm still having to meet Spider-Man, as you can see. I'm still, you know, working at the Daily Bugle. I mean, or, hey, maybe he's not working at the Daily Bugle. Maybe he's a professor at a college in New York. You know, Professor P Parker. Peter Parker. Brilliant but lazy. Um, maybe he's a professor at a college. When he's trying to manage that, teaching while me and Spider-Man, you know, that has to be really hard. In the middle of class, and his spider sense goes off, what do I do? Sorry guys, I gotta go run to the restroom real quick, be right back. I don't know. Um, but we can see that evolution of where Tommy is in his world. And then, you know, then Tom Holland goes back to his universe, and he's fighting Scorpion. And, you know, finally defeat Scorpion. And in the last, you know, 15 minutes of the movie, in the third act, we see Tom, you know, find that balance of going to class, being there on time for work at the Daily Mule, um, hanging out with his friends, going to defeat the mad guy in the city of New York. And that, to me, would be a great... Way to A, bring in one of the OG Spider-Men, but still, most of the movie is only Tom Holland in the first act, in the third act, and the middle act is just another Spider-Man, where he's giving, his, Toby's giving Tom life lessons, while also Tom is helping Toby fight this Vulture character. So it's a win-win. Um... Um, so let me know, do you like that idea for Spider-Man 4? That way Sony gets what they want and Marvel kind of, most of, most of the runtime, it will be only Tom Holland. Um, 
Let me know in the comments below, Matt the Matt.